O2 were connectivity partner for Country File Live 2018. And seeing this before the event, I was a bit excited because obviously being the official partner, O2 was going to deliver a fairly high-end solution to the event. And not only that, but O2 did a bit of a competition to win tickets to go to Country File Live. And I decided to apply for some tickets, just why not? And for once in my life, I actually won something. So I got to go to the event for free. And the majority of what I actually did at Country Bar Live was around the temporary sites, which I'm going to talk about in this video. The configuration for the first site was six sector L21 and three sectors for UG09, L08 and L18. The top of the mast used fairly standard O2 high capacity site antennas which are the Comscope 10 port antennas which have two high band beams and then the remainder of the ports are standard 65 degrees for two ports of low band and four ports of high ultra wide band. So the top antennas they're using the dual beam high ports to do the two beams of L21 per panel and therefore six beams or six sectors for the site and then they're using the red low band ports for one of the low bands so either the UG09 or the L08. Meanwhile the rest is carried on the lower antennas which are four port low band high band catherine antennas. So these will carry the L18, so single beam per panel, so three sectors, and then the other low band, so either UG09 or L08, depending on what was on the top antenna. Now the, and these antennas were down tilted a fair bit, especially the top antennas had a lot of quite noticeable down tilt just from the brackets and the way they're tilted. But from the base of the top antennas you can also see the tilting rod as well which is exhibiting I think about five degrees of down tilt if I recall correctly for at least one of them so combined with the visible external tilt these antennas were down tilted a lot and that's just simply because they are designed to provide a lot of capacity to a very small area the second mast is three sectors of UG09, L08, L18 and L21 overall but like the first one it is using dual beam antennas as well. If we start off at the left side of the picture of the mast the top antennas are the standard Comscope 10 port antennas that we saw before but only the dual beam high band ports are being used and that's to produce two beams of L18 and L21. Meanwhile the antenna below is a dual beam low band comscope antenna. So this has two beams of low band and it's doing two beams of UG09 and L08. So on that side of the mast we have our two sectors of everything. Meanwhile on the lower right of the antenna is the Comscope 10 port again. However in this case only the single beam ports are being used and in this case they're using the low band ports for the UG09 and L08 diplexed and the four high band single beam ports at the back are being used for L18 and L21. So all in all, three sectors of all of the band. So it's, it looks very complicated. It did take a few seconds for me to work out what was going on on it. But all in all, it does make a lot of sense. Getting backhaul to these events is always one of the biggest complexities because they occur typically in fields in the middle of nowhere where there is not fibre connectivity running all the way under the ground. And therefore, the third structure that I'm going to talk about with regards to O2 is their backhaul mast that was at the event. And this has three microwave outdoor units and dishes installed on it. So one of them is the microwave link connecting the temporary sites to O2's core network and the rest of O2's network. 
and the other two connect to the two temporary sites I spoke about earlier on in the video. Now these are using Huawei outdoor units and probably Huawei indoor units, they're using Huawei for their backhaul essentially. And this mast was really tall, so it was substantially taller than the temporary sites that were emitting the mobile signal for customers. And that is simply because getting a high performance microwave link requires line of sight, especially the frequencies that these run at. And as a result, the mast needs to be high, especially in quite a rural area that that was in. I'm not entirely sure what the overall capacity was for the backhaul system, but it was probably over a gigabit. And overall, these did carry a substantial amount of traffic for customers. The riggers dramatically overthought their mounting strategy for fixing those microwave links onto the pole at the top of the mast. If anyone has any ideas about how they did overthink the mounting and how they could have done it much easier, leave a comment down below and I'll be interested to see what people, what people's thoughts are. A general thing to note is that also while these temporary, so this temporary site system did have three 4G carriers on it, so the 800, 1800, 2100, it didn't aggregate at all for me and that is quite common for temporary sites for them not to aggregate bands for capacity reasons, i.e. the temporary sites are not really designed to produce really high speeds, they're designed to ensure a good performance for everybody there.